Hey Jeff, thank you so much for meeting me this morning, opening up your shop. Absolutely. Town. My pleasure. My so, pleasure. Uh, Courthouse Pizzeria, how, how's it been? How's the ride been so far? I'll tell you, um, far better than expected. Yeah? Yeah. It's um, both from a um, team member. My biggest fear was, and everybody talks about in restaurants, is finding good help. Yeah. And I can tell you that the team that we built, um, they're amazing. <clears throat> from day one, they have cared. And that's kind of one of the things you look for in a team member is that they actually care versus just collecting a check. Sure. And I will give it to the families of Medina because most of our team members are under 18. Okay. And most of them are first time <clears throat> jobs. And they literally, since day one, have felt like a part of the family. That's cool. So that's really I think cool. that's been a big surprise. I think the turnout, I mean, our grand opening numbers, we had um, PMQ Magazine, which is a publication for pizza around the country, okay. reach out because it got to California the numbers that our pizza shop is doing in Madonna, really? Ohio. It's unheard of. That's awesome. So, How did you get here? Like literally, what was your journey to... To Medina to, or the square? <laughs> let's start with your journey to Medina. Where, where, where did you grow up? Yeah, I grew up in Mansfield. <clears throat> okay. So Mansfield, as you know, is about 45 minutes um, south. Yeah. So that's why we have Jones Potato Chips. Okay. Because Jones Potato Chips was something I grew up on in Mansfield. Um, so I grew up in Mansfield, you know, at the age of 18, moved away to college in Columbus. So I went to Ohio State, okay. um, went to Franklin University to get my um, undergrad in finance, and then uh, started my master's at Ashton University. Then met my wonderful wife in Columbus, yeah. and long story short, her family's in Youngstown, my family's in Mansfield. So we said, let's find a place in the middle, so okay. kind of holiday time. Nice. We don't feel like we're sliding either side of the family. Yeah and it's worked out well. And first time we came here, we literally fell in love with Medina. It was like, what a hidden gem. Yeah, oh, that's so, cool. What, what did you study for your master's? What was your focus? Uh, marketing, actually. Okay. So undergrad in finance and a uh, focus in marketing, advertising. What, what led you to Courthouse Pizzeria? Like, what was your career yeah. before walking away from that and saying, we're doing this? Sure. Um, literally, I worked for corporate for the past 20 years. And my last job was with uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, actually, for their corporate headquarters in Minneapolis. Okay. So every Monday morning, my commute to work started at 3 a.m. to Cleveland Hopkins yeah. to Minneapolis. Oh. So I had a three-hour commute about 1,200 miles away. And wow. And with young family, as you know, yeah. um, it just got my work-life balance was way out of whack. Okay. You know, I had a beautiful kids, beautiful wife love the town and I'm living in a hotel in Minneapolis. So long story short is that we came to a point we had to make a decision and we both have always been very entrepreneurial and okay. we both have always said let's do our own thing. So when this spot came open um, it's one of those deals where location, location, location and then we open the front door and we're like oh my god we got some You don't get do. a better location <laughs> in Medina in the district than this. Is. This is it. Yeah. This is the location. So we did a lot of work obviously on the interior. Sure. Um, and 65 years this was a, a staple for Medina. I mean Whitey's Army Big Navy. Time. You can't when people ask where I'm at I don't say two public square. Hey, I say Whitey's. The Whitey's Army Navy store. They're like oh yeah. I yeah. know that place. So luckily you know, Jim and his daughter came in, they cut the ribbon with us, which was very special, very touching. I gotta say, your, your ribbon cutting, we've been partnering with the city and the chamber yeah. for probably a year and a half, two years. We do it collectively. And yours was oddly very emotional. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, my office is upstairs, so I got to know Jim and his family very well. But it was just, it was really beautiful to have him honored in the legacy of the store. And, and then what you guys did, it was, Probably the only ribbon cutting at which I've kind of teared up a little bit because it was I, just beautiful. I kind of cried a little bit myself. It was cool. It was really cool. Right. But how did how did you get to Courthouse Pizzeria? I mean, are you a pizza fanatic growing up? Were you like all about the pie? I love pizza. Okay. Pizza is the number one consumed food in America. Really? It has no barriers to gender, race. I mean, it's literally it's the. True. Perfect food. Yeah. You can eat it for breakfast, you can eat it for lunch, you can. you can eat it for dinner. You know, I've been in chicken wings, I've been in ribs, I've been in steaks and burgers <laughs> and, and all that. And I knew that pizza, just looking at all the variables, um, it provided the opportunity to give a something people love. Yeah. 
one thing I always wanted was a passion food. Like I didn't want to serve food that just filled the belly. I wanted okay. something that people get passionate about. And if you've seen our Facebook you know, comments, listen, people get passionate about pizza. They do. And to me, that's what I want. You know, okay. if everybody's just coming in because it's dinner time and they want to fill their belly and there's no passion, I'm not serving the right thing. Not the place. I okay. want something that's going to cause passion, good and bad. Yeah. Because bad passion isn't bad. That helps us become better. Sure. How did you come up with the recipe and the end product that you serve today? How did sure. you get there? Because, um, I mean, I, I, I walk by every day, you know, I saw you working on it. Never occurred to me that there's a whole science and process to getting to yeah. the product. Well, as you know, you don't see a delivery truck dropping off dough. Right, right. So in the background, you probably hear the mixer. We make our dough fresh. So the whole story is um, I originally had sought out um, experts in the industry. Never thought it didn't happen. A gentleman named Tom Lehman. He's called the dough doctor in mm -hmm. the business. He's taught at the American Bacon Institute in uh, Manhattan, Kansas for 50 years. Wow. He is the best of the best. Okay. So he's a editor um, in P&Q Magazine, which I referenced earlier. Um, I called Tom up out of the blue, told him my vision of a old school family style pizzeria, no alcohol, no TVs. Yeah. Um, they're old fashioned red and white checker cloths, 180 year old building. And he said, Jeff, I'm retired and I don't do this, but I'm gonna come see you. Really? So Tom literally jumped on a plane, Okay. flew out for four days. Tom and I, as you, when you walk by, we locked the doors. Right. I knew the taste profile and I knew what I wanted in a pizza. Okay. Tom helped me get there. And there's more secrets to dough than you would ever imagine. I'm sure there are. It has nothing to do with New York water. I'll dispel that myth. Um, <laughs> Because it is New York style pizza. It's New York style pizza. It's not but about the water. It's not about the water. Okay. And I would even say it's East Coast pizza versus New York style. New York style is very chewy. It's a little bit more rich in flavor. Okay. And one of the things Tom did is through his research said, Jeff, you don't want to serve a true New York style pizza. Midwest is why there's not New York style pizza here. Midwest doesn't, you know, they don't like it. Okay. They think it's not cooked all the way. So we came up with a recipe that gave a little bit more crunch to the bottom, sure. still thin crust, still thin, yeah. but not the chewy, chewy, elastic -y pizza. Yeah. So, and the, the difference is, literally, 15% water hydration takes it from our pizza to a true, true New York style pizza. Okay. So we cut our water back. So it gave it the more dough that could crunch up. It's, you're right, I had no idea there was such a science. It's temperature, we change our recipe by humidity. So okay. if it's wow. really humid out, we change our recipe because the dough doesn't form right. Okay. So. And I know when you first opened, there was not a struggle. I don't know the right word for it. You sold out of dough. But you sold out of dough. And I don't think people understand that everything is handmade here. It's, it's yep. not mass produced. Yep. We took the, and we still do, the old school bakery mentality. Okay. That we're going to make our dough. We're never going to jeopardize quality. I mean, I could have made emergency dough. I could have made enough dough to get us through that. I want to make sure that what we're selling is what it should be yeah. every single pot. And we had cooler space issues. Nobody would have thought we'd, we'd have the turnout we did. The line was around the block. It was huge. And thank yeah. God, it because was really obviously cool. this wasn't a small investment. Sure. But the whole running out of dough in hindsight was probably one of the best things that happened to us because it caused the buzz around town right that it was oh my god get there early or they're gonna run out and it's a bakery mentality sure we sure. don't remember because there's really not too many bakeries that truly make the fresh bread every morning and so forth yeah but our probably our grandparents they would get to the bakery at eight o'clock when they to open. get their bread because they're gonna run out at noon yeah you, you've kind of become a destination in town very quickly and there's so many faces and varieties coming through the door. Sure. What have you noticed just in the 11 weeks? Has your customer base changed? It seems like it's now kind of a fun place where a lot of teenagers yeah. come and hang out, and that normally hasn't been the case on the square. Yeah, our original goal and vision, again, no TVs, no alcohol, was families. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think that what I see now come through the door are families, and they're very loyal. So I, you've, I you've see, met your goal? Absolutely. 
Okay. So, so with, with your location, I know when Whitey's was open and Debbie was here, she was like the secondary visitors bureau. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the corner, people come here. Sure. When people from out of town come here, or even the locals, what are, what are those things that are quintessential Medina to you that you say, oh, you know, since you're here, you gotta go see this place, or go try this, or check this out? Sure. Obviously <coughs> restaurants, because yeah. I'm in the restaurant business. Sure. So I'm always talking about, you know, I gotta check out Sully's for great, you know, their, their mussels and their sandwiches are amazing. You know, PJ Marley's, those guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. um, coffee houses, um, obviously. Chippewa Lake, you know, Chippewa Lake is, I think, another little hidden gem. Absolutely. And I always tell people, you know, go check out Chippewa Lake, learn the history of the amusement park that was there. Yeah. Um, and all the different efforts to really revive it. Um, the popcorn shop, you know, there's just so much variety. Dan's Dogs, the cupcake shop, you yeah. know. So is there, are you seeing kind of a sense of community between the restaurants around the square? Absolutely. Okay. Since day one, you know, the cupcake shop, Eric, you know, he came over and helped me tear who owns Antiquation. Sure. But he came over and helped me tear the boards off the wall. So we basically helped get him open because I gave him he had product. all the wood <laughs> right. from here. Yeah. So, um, you know, lore over at Cool Beans, you know, here we are in the middle of a rush. I'm out of change, and she shows up from nowhere saying she's going to the bank. Do I need anything? That's cool. That doesn't happen right. in most restaurants. I'm usually competitive. Um, guys over at PJ Molly's, you know, John and, you know, he, he's at least once a week, hey, need anything? You doing all right? That's so, cool. That's really Paul, cool. Dan's dogs, you know, that guy is just, you know, 110 miles an hour. Yes, he is. But literally, the second week we're open, Saturday, I had three people call off. Here comes Paul. Paul and I are making pizza. Yeah, I remember reading about that. So it's that's cool. There's definitely since community. So in the next few months, we're going to see expansion of the menu. We see three three items of the menu. Okay. Um, you're going to see continued focus on um, local. So we did a fundraiser. It's called Making Dough. Is our new fundraiser oh, that cool. we do. Oh, cool. Tell me about that. Um, the Madonna Girl Soccer um, team had our first Making Dough. So basically they come in, we schedule a date and time, we'll produce a flyer that basically says come in on October 18th mm -hmm. for the Medina School Soccer Making Dough. We then PDF that, send it to the um, organizer, they then distribute it to their network and people either come in, guests, with the flyer, they print it off, or their phone. Yeah. So two weeks ago we did one with the Medina Schools, um, Medina High School Soccer, Medina Girls Soccer. And I set up this program for Buffalo Wild Wings eight years ago. Yeah. Eat Wings raise funds. So very similar program. Um, I've never seen anything like it. We literally um, had 95 families come in. Oh my gosh. On a Saturday <laughs> there in support of Medina School Soccer. That's fantastic. Medina Girls Soccer. Um, I think we rose north of $220 for them in That's a seven awesome. hour period. So it's a win-win. Really cool. I'm gonna put a lot of focus on that because okay. I think giving back in that form is a win-win. Sure. Because most businesses, they set up a budget for donations and such. Yeah. To me, I don't have to set my budget. If the money's coming in, I can give it back. It's, awesome. it's good for schools, it's good for um, things like fallen officers, if it, God forbid it happened. It's okay. good for um, my friend find out they have some terminal disease. So we're here to help. This is our program to help support the needs of the community. That's really awesome. Jeff, thank you so much for your time today oh, and, thank and you. sharing awesome. the story. It's so great to learn more about it. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks, Matt.